Hi readers, Chris here. I don't know about you, but I have been having a crazy holiday season. I haven't been able to take any time off of work, so I've been working, visiting friends and family, doing all the holiday things. So things have been a little crazy, but I promise next week I'll be back on more of a regular schedule. But until then, because it's New Year's Eve, I wanted to end the year with my top 10 favorite books of the year of 2021. Of course, this list is totally biased based on my own personal opinion. Not the best books of the year. These are just my personal favorites. If you've been following me for a while, you will know that my favorite books are the ones that either give me an emotional response or like a physical response. It is so, so, so hard to rank all the books that I read by my favorites because they're so different, but I did the best I could. So I'm going to start off with my number 10 favorite book of the year, and that's going to be The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss. And yes, I'm actually holding the right book this time. I know I did a full length review on this book and even though I had some complaints about it, I still have to say that it is one of my favorite reads of the year. This series is just so amazing. His writing is just so great. It like, it forces you to keep reading. It forces you to get invested in these characters and wanting to know what happens. I already talked about a lot about this book recently, so I'm not going to talk about it again. I will link the uh, video above if I haven't already, but all I'm going to say is that I still really love this series. I'm still super invested. I want to find out what happens, but because it's not a complete story and some of the other things that I talked about in my review, that is why it's only number 10 and not higher on my list this year. My number nine favorite book of the year is going to be Scarlet from the Lunar Chronicles. I absolutely love the Lunar Chronicles. I actually just finished reading Winter, which was the fourth book of the Lunar Chronicles. Haven't reviewed it yet. That will be coming. But I really love this series. It's a YA fantasy slash sci-fi. And basically, we have a bunch of characters on Earth. We have this evil queen of the moon. She's trying to take over Every book in this series follows a different character that is based on a fairy tale character. So in book one, we have Cinder. She is a human slash cyborg, and her story is kind of based on Cinderella. Uh, Cress, which I reviewed recently, is a young girl who was raised like alone in a satellite. She's like Rapunzel. And Scarlet, with her red hair here and her wolf, is basically like a little red riding hood type character. There's a lot of characters in this series and I really enjoy them all, like I really do. But I have to say that out of all the characters, Scarlet and Scarlet's story just, I don't know, there's something about it that she's my favorite. I think it's her, she has a very fiery personality, so she's very, uh, she's very spunky, she's very, uh, go, she's a, a go-getter, not that the other ones aren't, but she just has this fire in her, this fiery personality and this spunkiness that I really, really, really like. And there's also like romances in each of the books. Each of the girls has their own romance. And the romance in this book, um, her, you know, her romance with this guy who they call Wolf. He's like a very like gruff, tough soldier type character. And like she's the only one that kind of sees underneath his hard exterior. I just really like their romance. I think it's both like sweet and complex at the same time, which I really, really enjoy. It's not just like all rainbows and butterflies. It's a little bit more complicated than that. So that's why I really like their relationship. So that's just another reason why Scarlet is my favorite character in this series. And that's why Scarlet is my number nine pick for the year. And now for something completely different, my number eight pick for the year is going to be Fool by Christopher Moore. I love Christopher Moore's books. They are super, super, super funny. And while reading this book, I laughed multiple times out loud. In case you missed my review, Fool is basically a retelling of King Lear told from the perspective of Pocket, 
the Black Fool. So he's the fool. He's King Lear's fool. So he kind of sees everything that goes on with Lear's uh, daughters and their betrayals. And there's a lot of like politicking and backstabbing and there's witches involved and there's a ghost because there's always a bloody ghost. But the way that it's written is just super, super funny. I found myself laughing out loud multiple times reading this book. I will say it is definitely, definitely on the absurd side. So if you're not someone that likes absurd humor and absurd stories, probably not for you. That is why it is slightly lower on my list because it's like so far out there. I know it's not the type of book that's for everyone, but that's okay. I still absolutely loved it. Like I said, because it made me laugh out loud so many times, I had to put it on my top 10. So that is why Fool is number eight. Next up is the first of multiple Stephen King books that made it on my list this year, and that is going to be Christine. I read Christine earlier in the year, and I have to say that, yes, I am completely biased in my love for this book because, in case you didn't know, my full name is Christine, with a K. But Christine by Stephen King, I think this book is such a fantastic example of the things that Stephen King does right. And that is building characters and building tension. The tension in this book starts right at page one, where we have a pair of best friends, two young boys. One of them sees this broken down car on the side of the road, has to get it, has to buy it. And his other friend is kind of trying to talk him out of it. And then over the course of the story, the tension just builds and builds and builds and this car just gets like eviler and eviler and eviler until finally there's this like big climatic showdown at the end. There were scenes in this book where like literally I could feel the little hairs on my arm like stand up straight. This book gave me the chills, it gave me the tension, it gave me all the things that I want when reading a Stephen King book, so that is why Christine is number seven on my list. Number six on my list is a book that I read all the way back in like January, in the beginning of the year, and that's going to be The Diabolic by S.J. Kincaid. This book was actually recommended to me by one of my followers over on Instagram, uh, Haley Strothman. Haley recommended this book to me because it's a YA sci-fi and I read a lot of YA fantasy and genre E type stuff. I did do a review about this, like it's like a year ago now, but the basic setup is that we have a young girl who is known as a diabolic. She's basically a genetically engineered uh, girl who has been given kind of all of these like special abilities because she is bonded to a person and she is supposed to protect this person with her life if needed. The person that she's bonded to, her name is Sidonia, and she is the daughter of like this senator, basically, a space senator. So she is bonded to Sidonia. She loves her with everything in her, uh, you know, her ability to do so. And when Sidonia is threatened and Sidonia is supposed to appear, appear in this like galactic court where she's really going to be put in danger, uh, our diabolic, whose name is Nemesis, goes in her place. So Nemesis, as this diabolic, has to pretend that she is a normal human girl, has to pretend that she is the daughter of a senator, and has to survive like all the games that they play in this court. It's a super, super cool setup. It is a super cool, um, everything about this book is super cool. But there is one moment in particular in this story that totally caught me by surprise and literally made me break down in tears. Something I was not expecting, <laughs> something happens, and I don't want to give it away because I don't want to give away spoilers, but let me just say that if you are a person that is sensitive to certain types of things, <laughs> there's a thing that happened in this book that I did not expect, and when it happened, I had to close the book and walk away because I just... It just got me so, so, so hard, <laughs> and because I wasn't expecting it, like... 
Yeah. So that is why the Diabolic is on this list at number six for the year. Just like the Diabolic before it, all the rest of the books on my uh, top 10 list here not only gave me like a physical, you know, sort of reaction, but also a like a verbal reaction as well. So it was crying in the Diabolic and it was crying again in next one, number five, which is going to be The Girl with the Louding Voice. Again, I read this earlier in the year. It's a contemporary book about a, a young girl who is growing up in rural uh, Nigeria and her father basically sells her off to a man in the village, a man who already has other wives. She's going to be the youngest wife now for like economic gain, basically. But, you know, she's not okay with that. So things happen. She tries to escape from him. She ends up in this big city where she doesn't know anyone. She's on her own. She ends up getting hired as like a maid in this wealthy house. But then like a whole slew of other problems happen to her there, there as well. And this book really, really really forced me to like start googling stuff like going on the internet and seeing if like the things that this girl experienced like are they based on real things and they are like there are tons of women who get sold into these marriages at young ages and obviously that's horrible uh there's things like jungle justice where the people in the villages kind of see females as like less than and the way that they deal with those things is like really horrible the economics and the wealth disparity between the people that have a whole lot of money and the people that don't have anything it's there's a lot in this book and this girl goes through a lot not all of it is easy to read and some of it like it really hits you in the gut it really hits you in the gut but at the end of the day, I will say that it is a, a hopeful story. So even though this book made me cry multiple times, it also made me feel hopeful at the end that this girl was going to gonna be okay. So this is not the type of book that I would normally read. I'm much more into like genre-y stuff, but this book was recommended to me by uh Kristen's Reading Nook over on Instagram, and I'm so glad she recommended it to me because I absolutely ended up loving it, and that's why this book is number five on my list for the year. My top four books for the year were so, so, so hard to put in order because I absolutely love, love these four books. They are definitely my four favorites of the year, but I love them all for very different reasons. So number four is going to be Tokyo Ever After by Amiko Jean. Amiko Jean. I hope I'm saying that right. So this is a YA romance that came in one of my Spearcraft book boxes earlier this year. So we basically had, this book is basically a cross between Crazy Rich Asians and the Princess Diaries. So we have a young girl growing up on the West Coast. She um, is raised by a single mother. She doesn't know anything about her father other than he's from Japan. Well, she finds out that not only is her father from Japan, he's actually the crown prince of Japan. So she goes over to Japan to meet him. She's trying to figure out like how her relationship with him is going to be and how like she fits into the culture over there because she's been raised as a you know, as an American. And of course, she meets, you know, a guy, there's a romance, there's all these things. The reason that I love this book so much is because it was unexpectedly funny. This book is absolutely hilarious. So our main character, the things that she says, the things that she thinks, they were just hysterical to me, like the way she talks about how her and her friends love Buffy the Vampire Slayer, or the way that they sing karaoke to like Warren G's Regulators, like everything she said, oh, I think she watches Downton Abbey on the on her airplane, which is like one of my favorite shows. I just absolutely loved, loved, loved our main character in this book, and I loved her dialogue. It is super funny, so cute cutest book I've read this 
year. Super, super funny. Like, yes, Fool was funny, but in like a totally different way. This was funny in like a, I feel like anyone could find this funny way. And, and if those things weren't enough, there is a scene in this book where a character has a ferret. Yes, that's right. There is an appearance of a ferret in this book. So obviously, obviously, this book had to be on my top 10 list. I love it so much. If you like romance at all, Tokyo Ever After, definitely recommend it. Definitely give it a try. That's why it is number four on my list. And now for something completely different. Number three on my favorite books of the year is going to be my second Stephen King book that I picked, It. Yes, it could not be more different than Tokyo Ever After, but I also absolutely loved It. I talked about it a lot when I reviewed it. I did a one minute review. I did a full length review. I've talked about this book a lot. If you're not familiar with it for some reason, it's basically we have our villain Pennywise the clown. Pennywise is this evil spirit who has been haunting the town of Derry for like since the beginning of time. He's always been there. And there's like a cyclical pattern to like when he appears in the town and like does evil deeds. There is a group of children called the Losers who kind of have a showdown with Pennywise when they are um, young kids. Something happens. They all leave town. And then like 30 years later, when they're adults, they have to come back. They've all forgotten about, you know, what happened when they were kids, but they have to try and remember because Pennywise is back and they have to try and defeat him again. That is a super, super simple explanation for a book that's over a thousand pages long. Suffice to say, I think that this book is an absolute masterpiece in the way that it's written. Like this book may have not made me cry or made me laugh, but it definitely gave me all of the Stephen King chills, all of the Stephen King heebie-jeebies and creepy vibes and all the things that you, that I love Stephen King for. And it's just masterfully, masterfully written. Like everything in this book every word, every line like has meaning. Everything's there for a purpose. It's just, it's brilliantly written, brilliantly written. Definitely deserves to be on all top 10 lists, but that's why it is number three. And the only reason it didn't make one or two is just because my, I had to pick a favorite. I had to pick a favorite and the other two are just more of my favorites. That's all I can really say. So it. Okay. Again, trying to pick between number one and number two was super, super, super hard. So my second favorite book of the year is going to be The Dragon Republic by R.F. Quang. It's not a big secret that The Poppy Wars has been my favorite adult fantasy series of the year, my absolute favorite. And Laura Booklove over at Instagram, she recommended the first Poppy War to me. I loved it so much. I had to keep reading the series. I just finished the last book in the series. I just reviewed it uh, last week. My favorite book in this series is definitely the second one, The Dragon Republic, because it has everything that I wanted in it. I love the way the book, well, I shouldn't say I love, I understand the way the book ends, but it's not what I want of what end. The way that this book ends is like, it is like a piece of art, a piece of art. So we have our main character, Rin. She is like this poor orphan from the South. She gets into this prestigious military school and she ends up being able to get the power to like call down a god. And then there's all these like political things happening where her country is split into all these divisions. They're all fighting each other, but then they have also have people that are invading from other countries. It's like a whole big thing. This series is grim, it is dark, it is violent, it's brutal. Rin is like on drugs half the time, but she also has the power of a phoenix. And her enemy, her sometimes, you know, kind of schoolboy crush, sometimes enemy, this guy Neza, he has the power of this water dragon. So the way that they play off the whole fire-water uh, relationship is just absolutely 
gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. A piece of art. I love this series so much. I love Rin because her, you know, opium addicted, violent girl is not something that we normally see in fantasy. I love her. I love the series. Second book is my favorite book of the series. So that's why I picked this one. And that's why it's number two on my list. Finally, that brings me to number one, my number one favorite book of the year. Not something that I expected at all, but my number one pick of the year is going to be A Man Called Oove by Frederick Bachman. And yes, this is not a genre book. This is like a contemporary adult novel. It's about an old man. His name is Oove. He lives alone in this, you know, neighborhood. and He's super angry and grumpy and cranky, like basically hates everyone. And as the story goes on, you get to know him and you get to know about him. You get to know all the things he's gone through in life. There's a new family that moves in next door. They have young kids. They kind of try and take, they kind of take it upon themselves to try and like get under, like peel back Oove's layers. And let me just tell you, this book made me laugh multiple times. This book made me cry multiple times and not like shed a tear cry. I mean like sobbing, needing tissues, crying. And this book also made me feel happy. It made me feel absolutely like almost every emotion that you could possibly think of. Like maybe not fear, but even horror at some point. So when you find out some things that Oove has gone through in the past, like they're horrifying. They're things that like you would not wish on your worst enemy. So I absolutely loved this story. I loved Oove. I loved A Man Called Oove. This book is sweet. It is heartfelt. It is heartbreaking. It is everything that I could possibly want all wrapped up in one story. It is the first Bachman book that I've ever read. It definitely will not be my last. I'm going to be on the hunt for more Bachman books in 2022. But until then, I'm going to say A Man Called Oove, unexpectedly, my number one favorite book of 2021. There you have it, my top 10 list for 2021. Have you read any of these books? I want to hear what books are on your top 10 list for the year. Let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already, please subscribe to my channel and I will be going back to my regular video schedule starting next week with more book reviews, more unboxings, and all sorts of bookish videos. All right, everyone. Happy reading.